Let's have a look at how we find the length of a short side on a right angled triangle using Pythagoras' theorem. Now, I say a short side because what we're trying to find here is one of these two sides, not the long side, the hypotenuse. So the procedure is pretty much the same as what we did when we found the hypotenuse. It's just the working comes out slightly different because we have our unknown on the same side of the equation as something else. Let's have a look at what happens. Now, first step, write the equation every time. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And then consider which of your a's, b's and c's. Now, c has to be the hypotenuse. So if we label this a, then this one will be b. So on the second line, go ahead and substitute in what you know. So we don't know a, so we can only write a squared. That's as good as it gets. But we know that b is 5. So we have 5 squared. And that all equals 8 squared. OK, on the next line, let's work out what 5 squared and 8 squared actually are. 5 squared is 5 fives, which is 25. And 8 squared is 8 eighths, which is 64. Now, on the next line, we're trying to get a squared by itself so we can see what it is. And then we'll be able to take the square root of it to find out what a might be. So we really want to get this a squared on its own. At the moment, it's got 25 added to it. So use your equation solving skills here and think, how do we undo this plus 25? We subtract 25 from both sides of the equation, treat it like a seesaw and we have to keep it balanced. Now, if you want to work with large numbers, these aren't very big numbers, but sometimes here you get quite, quite big numbers. I think it's handy just to jot down what you're trying to do on both sides, minus 25, minus 25. That way you can see that if you have 25 and you take it away, you'll have nothing left there except just the a squared, and you can rewrite that. Keep your equal signs under each other. And over here it's quite nice if you've got some trading to do. It means you can do it really quickly and easily without even reaching for your calculator. You can see that here you'll have to do some trading to find the answer here. And the 39 just drops down, almost like a little algorithm, doesn't it? So if you had a really big number there, this is quite a handy thing to do to keep your columns lined up. Okay, so we know that a squared is 39. So what is a? Well, what have I done to get from here to here? The square is gone. So I've sort of unsquared the number, haven't I? Now the opposite of squaring something, to undo that, we take the square root. So that's what's happened on this side. To make up for it, we have to do the same to the other side. We take the square root. Now, this is not a, an exact whole number, an integer. It's going to be 6 and a bit, isn't it? Because I know the square root of 36 is 6. The square root of uh, 49 is 7. So it's somewhere between those two. So it's going to be 6 point something. Now, if you'd like to know what it is exactly, you need to grab your calculator at this point and just type in square root of 39 equals and we've got a choice there. We'll need to round it off to some level. Let's just go to one decimal place. We'll say it's 6.2. Now, we've, put, we've rounded it off, so we need to say what we rounded it off to. And we need to put some units in here too. 6.2 what? 6.2 centimetres. Now, last step, as always, take your 6.2 centimetres, bring it back to your picture, and ask yourself, does it make sense? Because if you've done something wrong, it'll be wrong by a lot, and it'll be really obvious. And 6.2 looks pretty good here. I'm quite happy with that, even though my drawing's not perfectly to scale. It looks pretty much right.